then how to derive Lorentz transformation equations of special theory of relativity. If we know the coordinates of an event in one inertial reference frame, we can use Lorentz transformation equations to find the coordinates of the event in another inertial reference frame. An event is anything that happens at a particular location and at a particular time. Therefore, the coordinates of an event consist of space coordinates that is where it happened and time coordinates that is when it happened. Start with the two basic postulates of special theory of relativity. The first postulate says that laws of physics are same in all inertia reference frames. This means there is no preferred inertia reference frame. Second postulate says that speed of light in free space has same value in all inertia reference frames. This is how we derive Lorentz transformation equations. Consider two inertial frames S and S prime. Assume that their axes X and X prime always coincide. Y and Y prime are always parallel. Z and Z prime are always parallel. S prime is moving at velocity V along X axis related to frame S. And when their origins coincide, then their clocks are set to zero. Motion is only along axis X or X prime. The other corresponding pairs of axes are always parallel. Therefore, y prime equals y, z prime equals z, x prime depends only on x and t. Similarly, t prime also depends only on x and t. Consider a particle which is moving along x axis at a constant velocity in frame S. Therefore, the acceleration of the particle related to frame S is zero or the net force on the particle in frame S is zero. We know that net force does not change from one inertial frame to another inertial frame. Both frames S and S prime are inertial frames. Therefore, the net force on the particle in frame S prime is also zero or the acceleration of the particle in frame S prime is zero. We have used here first postulate which says that no inertial frame of reference is preferred. Laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames and here we have used the law of inertia in both inertial frames n as s prime and s prime since the acceleration of the particle in frame s prime is zero this means the velocity of the particle in frame s prime is a constant or in other words dx prime by dt prime is a constant dx prime by dt prime equals dx prime by dt divided by dt prime by dt this can be further expanded using partial derivatives with respect to x and t. We found that when dx by dt is a constant, then dx prime by dt prime is a constant. This is possible only if the partial derivatives are constants. Therefore, x prime is a linear function of x and t and t prime is a linear function of x and t. Therefore, x prime is of the form a1x plus a2t plus a3 and t prime is of the form b1x plus b2t plus b3. When t is 0, then x, x prime and t prime are also 0. Therefore, the constant terms a3 and b3 are 0. And we get x prime equals a1x plus a2t and t prime equals b1x plus b2t. Consider the event when s prime has moved for time t relative to frame s. The position of o prime in frame s is x which equals vt. And in frame S prime, it is X prime which equals zero because the position of O prime in frame S prime is always zero. Substitute these values of X and X prime in equation one. We get zero equals A1 VT plus A2 T. Take T as a common factor. This equation is valid for any value of T. Therefore, we get A1 V plus A2 equals zero. And from that, we get A2 equals minus A1 V. Substitute A2 equals minus A1 V in equation one. We get x prime equals a1 x minus a1 vt. We can take a1 as a common factor. Then we get x prime equals a1 multiplied by x minus vt. Usually symbol gamma is used in place of a1. Then we get x prime equals gamma multiplied by x minus vt. S is moving at velocity minus v relative to frame s prime. Consider the event when s has moved relative to s prime for time t prime. Then the position of point O is x prime equals minus vt prime in frame s prime and it is zero in frame s. Put these values of x prime and x in equations two and three. 
from equation 2 we get t prime equals b to t from equation 3 we get t prime equals gamma t therefore b to t equals gamma t or b2 equals gamma b2 equals gamma substitute this into equation 2 so we get t prime equals b1 x plus gamma t we can write this as t prime equals gamma t plus b1 x take gamma as a common factor t prime equals gamma multiplied by t plus b1 x by gamma b1 by gamma is a constant call this as constant b then we will get t prime equals gamma multiplied by t plus bx we got the equations x prime equals gamma multiplied by x minus vp and t prime equals gamma multiplied by t plus bx when t and t prime are zero then assume a ray of light t gives from common origin o or o prime and moves along the x or x prime axis therefore in frame s prime x prime equals c t prime and in frame s x equals c t here using postulate 2 i have assumed that the speed of light is the same which is c in both frames s and s prime substitute these into equations 3 and 4 from equation 3 we will get c t prime equals gamma multiplied by c t minus v t or gamma t multiplied by c minus v and from equation 4 we will get c t prime equals c gamma multiplied by t plus b c t or gamma t multiplied by c plus b c square from these we get c minus v equals c plus b c square or minus v equals b c square or b equals minus v by c square b equals minus v by c square when we substitute that we get these equations x prime equals gamma multiplied by x minus v t and t prime equals gamma multiplied by t minus 6 v by c square i am calling these equations 3a and 4a because i will be calling reverse transformations as equation 3b and 4b we know that s prime is moving relative to frame s at velocity v this means s is moving at velocity minus v relative to frame s prime to get reverse transformations in equation 3a and 4a exchange x and x prime exchange t and t prime and replace v with negative v then we get x equals gamma multiplied by x prime plus v t prime and t equals gamma multiplied by t prime plus x prime v by c square now use equation 3b and 4b in equation 3a simplify we get gamma square as a common factor we simplify further we get x prime equals gamma square multiplied by x prime minus x prime v square by c square now gamma square x prime is a common factor when we divide both sides by x prime we get gamma square multiplied by 1 minus v square by c square is equal to 1 or gamma square equals 1 divided by 1 minus v square by c square we take square root on both sides and we get gamma equals 1 divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square finally we get these Lorentz transformation equations y prime equals y z prime equals z x prime equals gamma multiplied by x minus vt and x equals gamma x prime plus vt prime t prime equals gamma multiplied by t minus x v by c square and t equals gamma multiplied by t prime plus x prime v by c square where the constant gamma is 1 divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square these transformation equations are valid under these assumptions s and s prime both are inertial frames of reference axis x and x prime always coincide y and y prime axis are always parallel z and z prime axis are always parallel s prime is moving at velocity v related to frame s and also when the origins o and o prime coincide then we set t and t prime to 0.